It's the last day of FIBA 2022 World Cup group play here in Sydney, Australia. Puerto Rico, Korea going toe to toe here in Group A. The winner stays, the loser goes home. Welcome inside the Sydney Superdome. I'm Despina Barton, my partner in crime, Andrew Gaze, the five-time Olympian, FIBA Hall of Famer, and former Australian national team player, Andrew Korea and Puerto Rico. They're gonna have to lay it all out today. What can we expect? Well, you're gonna see two very desperate teams because there's so much at stake, an opportunity to advance and continue on and give yourself a chance in the quarterfinals. And uh, both these teams have had some challenges throughout the course of the, the tournament. Both of them have suffered some pretty significant losses along the way but uh, but they have the capacity to play and compete with some of the better teams and Puerto Rico a little bit more athletic got a, a size advantage over Korea and Puerto Rico very astute in their game yesterday against China where they rested some of their marquee players and uh, really tried to just to conserve energy and, and almost concede the game in preparation for this one because they knew that what what was going to be at stake yeah lots of high stakes and that game you're referencing to was against china for puerto rico they fell 95 63 and what that game did allow them to do were work in some of those younger roster players and we got to see the likes and the sparkling of san antonio yeah trinity san antonio only 18 years of age and she was really aggressive, played with tremendous confidence, and that's what happens when you get some extended minutes. She, uh, she averaging 15 minutes a game, but she played quite a bit in that game against China. And uh, at the other end, we've also got uh, one of the leading scorers in the competition in Isu Kun, who had a 37-point outing against Bosnia Herzegovina. Yeah, and it was a special, a special day for her. And this Korean team, they play a lot from the three-point line. They like to let it fly. And when they can hit shots from there, they are really tough to beat. We saw in the first five minutes in the game yesterday against the powerful United States what they can do when they are able to uh, hit those three balls. Unfortunately, against the, the might of USA, they weren't able to sustain it for very long. But uh, certainly for some brief periods there, they looked really good. Both of these teams, like we said, competing for that final spot in Group A. The winner today will advance. Both teams walk in with records of one in three here in FIBA World Cup preliminary play. A look at the slate today. We've got China, Belgium coming up next, USA and Bosnia and Herzegovina. That will round out all the group competition. Then there will be a draw this evening. I believe it's slated for 11.15 p.m. to find yeah. out how everyone matches up in those elimination rounds. But of course, China and USA atop that leaderboard. And of course it is one ver two in one pool against three versus four in the other. And before we get started, we're gonna quiet down for the national anthems and flag presentation. First with the visiting team Korea. and the national anthem of Puerto Rico.
we are almost ready to play ball. These two teams will meet at center court and do a gift exchange, a part of the rich tradition here in the FIBA World Cup stage. They're clapping it up here with the Hoyts Little Champions. Hmm. Lots of young fans getting to meet their idols, which is kind of special, Andrew. I know everyone's been coming up to you, too, here in the stands. Yeah, no, it is great when you see the youngsters, the future of the sport, come out here and get to be on the world stage and, and share some a uh, brief bit of time with these athletes and hopefully it provides a bit of motivation for them. And these are the three officials that will be tasked with be, with calling a clean game. Pressure's on for those folks down on the floor. Meanwhile, Korea, they're looking to break some, break some streaks here. They've just won one of their last 13 games here in World Cup competition. And they had a large defeat. USA beat them by 76 yesterday, set a new World Cup record, and they're going to stick with what they know. So the starting lineup, Kong, Pak, Pak, Kim, and Dambi Kim, the captain, will be a consistent at least four of the five that we've seen Korea go with throughout the competition. They're led by Chung Sun Min, legendary coach, icon in the game, former national team member. And for those of you following from the state, she played for the WNBA Seattle Storm. So very popular figure here for Korea. On the other side of the court, Puerto Rico got their first ever win in World Cup play, opening up this tournament against Bosnia-Herzegovina. That's their star, Garantes, and she will stay in that lineup. We'll welcome back Tyra Melendez, Rosado, their captain, Hollingshed, and Isalis Quinones down on the post. But Arela Garantes has been the team's leading scorer. Kind of an off day against China, only put up 12 when she's been averaging about 18 to 20. Well, that's right. And she's the, actually still the, the second leading scorer in the competition behind Asia Wilson of the United States, who's averaging 40. Asia Wilson, of course, has only played the two games, whereas uh, Girantes has played all four. And in that game against China, I think that she was part of the coach's rotation policy in preparing for this very important game against Korea. And it's going to be interesting to see how Korea bounced back from the United States thrashing. 145 points they gave up, which is a new uh, World Cup record for points in a game by a team. Yeah, it was an incredible offensive showcase for USA. They got to do just about everything on Korea, work their transition game, half court, smothering full court defense. I mean, for USA, uh, that was a, a game that I'm sure they're hanging their hat on with the opportunities that they were able to run certain sets and rotations. Well, that's right. And uh, for Korea, they just got completely annihilated on the boards. And if they're going to give themselves a chance in this one, they need to own the boards. And that's really going to be, I think, uh, on the flip side, what Puerto Rico has seen, the deficiencies in Korea and their inability to get on the glass. That's an area that they feel that they could have a really strong advantage. And if you're just joining us, we are in Sydney, Australia. This is the FIBA 2022 World Cup. The 12 top teams in the world spending the last six days here in Sydney. Five games they've already put in. This is technically game day number five for these two teams, the final of group play. And like we said, this one will determine who advances and who goes home. And action has begun here inside the Sydney Superdome. Group A, Puerto Rico, Korea. Winner will move on and advance into the quarterfinal round. Hollingshin, first three ball is in. Well, she has made at least one three-point field goal basket in every single game she's played in this tournament so far. And she gets Puerto Rico off to a, a great start with that wide open three from the top of the key. Kim likes that look. Hollingshed with the board. Korea sticking back on defense. Melendez, who missed a game as she was a little banged up for her ankle, has returned the last two contests. Hauling Shed pull up jumper right in the eye of Hajin Pak. First five go to uh, Hauling Shed. 
She's a tremendous athlete and just really poor defense by career. They're not playing with a level of urgency that they they need. Don B. Kim, their captain, misses. Rosado pushing forward. Garantes kicks it. Around the horn they go. Rosado from the wing. A miss. Quinones. She'll go to shoot two. Wow, they found a foul on that one. And there it was Chi Shung Puck. Looked like there was a lot of ball. And right there is the problem for Korea. Second shots. The worst rebounding team in the competition by a long, long way. Only averaging 28 total boards so far. Puerto Rico, they're not that much better, but with the uh, 35 rebounds a game. But in particular, it's the defensive boards that Korea need to come up with if they're going to have a chance. One for two there from Quinones on the curl. Shots a miss from oh, Lee Su Kong. Garantes, a little shuffle there and lays it in on the right. I know it's early days, but they might need to have a quick timeout. Figure out what's going on the defensive end. Kim goes baseline. Streaker comes through. And Isu Kong will lay it in. Holling Shin there to defend. Well, at least they went to the basket. Their first three field goal attempts were all from the three-point line. Oh, dear. Easy money. A miss by Garantes turns into two more. The putback from Izalis Quinones. Well, the worst possible start for Korea in all facets of the game. They've looked disinterested, unorganized, and playing with no level of urgency. Do they understand what's at stake here? Their tournament is on the line, and they haven't shown it with their body, body language and their efforts so far, Korea. And I like the timeout. <laughs> Well, there's one thing to go in and talk about your strategy. The other one is to just be able to play with it a level of intensity. Here it is, it all got started. And in the on little on-ball screen and the pick and pop, and wide open. And then after you've just made a three, just a passive defense there. And Holling Shed wide open on her first two. And she's also shown some work on the glass there. You see it averaging 11 and a half points at a healthy 46%. So an early 10-0 run for the Puerto Rican team. Pac and Melendez is there. Hollingshed with the rebound. She'll get an open look herself. And another three. Hollingshed with eight of the team's 13. Well, right now she's in that beautiful, beautiful basketball zone where the ring looks like a hula hoop. And everything she throws up, she feels like it's going to go in. Pac inside. Kim turns on Garantes, kicks it out. Shot goes up on the wing from Shishan Pak. And Rosado's running. Oh, Garantes here dribbling off her foot. She's, she recognizes. Yep. Korea making some substitutions and they do it in a different look, but also their strategy. So far, they've taken six field goal attempts. Five of them have been from the three-point line, and they've yet to nail a field goal. Oh, of six in total. Cam looking for a cutter. There she goes. Hyjin Pak from the wing. No, Kim keeps it alive. 
She'll get the ball right back. Quick little fake. Extra pass. They're looking for the best shot on the floor. So Puerto Rico sets up here in the half court. Rosado. The Garantes. Melendez drives through, somehow finds Hollingshed. She's got 10 double digits for Hollingshed. Yeah, right place at the right time. And a little deflection, the ball bubbles out and falls in the lap of Hollingshed. And now we've got an offensive foul. So the worst possible start for Korea in such a big game. And I know that there's a size disadvantage that Korea has got, but just settling for jump shots the entire time and got to find a way to either off the bounce or with their cutting action to get more action around the rim, try and put some pressure on this Puerto Rican defense and even work your way to the free throw line. They pick up a steal here. We're running with Heijin and Pak. Kim back to Pak and an offensive. They're in her way, Quinones. That's good defense. Sliding of the feet there. Really well done by Quinones. Pamela Rosado, the captain. Hollingshed, three, heat check. She's still hot, 13 points, five rebounds in the first four and a half minutes. Well, it's an incredible shooting display. And Korea need to knuckle down and at least make her put it to the floor and have her shoot off the dribble rather than just catch and shoot. Kim drives left, laying on the right. Kiss off the glass, it's in. And that's what I'm talking about. They run their five-out offense, everyone's spread, penetration, and just try and get to the rim. That time, uh, relatively easy too, but at least you've got the chance to for a foul and work your way to the free throw line. Puerto Rico holds Korea scoreless the first five minutes. And that's better. Hollingshed at least was forced to put the ball to the floor rather than just catch and shoot. And it looks like Kinyanis on the rebounding attempt gets called for the foul. There's that penetration, which I think Korea need to see a little bit more of. So Melendez takes a breather. We see Jennifer O'Neill step on the court. Zombie Kim, too, for Korea on the bench with her team. Pak at Hollingshed. Hollingshed lets her go right nice. by her. The drive to the lane, good for Chichon Pak. Garantes, right at Kim. Beautiful, strong take on Isu Khan. Hajin, straight to the rack, Rosado there. Garantes, feeding Hollingshed on the block. Contact there. Korea is going the other way. Deep three ball goes up for Hajin hey Park. Yoon out. Keeping the distance. Isu Kong hits for three. Well, again, that one came off the penetration, although it was still a long three ball where they're now one of eight from the three-point line. At least it came from a look after a penetration. Calling Shed, two seconds to shoot. We'll pull the trigger, it's short. Kong, and she will travel. Well, it's definitely a little travel, but she by 
Isu Khan. But I think the issue with the travel is it there's been a lot of that type of shuffling in the feet that goes unwhistled. There you see the long three ball drops in. That's their first and only made three-point field goal attempt. And there we see the star of the first quarter. So far, Hollingshed just getting a breather. She hasn't been shy. That's what happens when you get hot, I suppose. You want to keep milking it, but only played seven minutes in this one. She's already got up eight shots, five of eight from the field. Perfect three of three from the three-point line. 13 points in seven minutes. She's been crashing the boards, too. On Lingshed with five rebounds. That's an amazing seven minutes of basketball. She's been in everything. O'Neal to inbound. Garantes goes baseline. Strong take, no whistle. Jim with the rebound. Bump fake for Pac. Yoon left alone on the top of the key. Garantes recovers, kicks up to Melendez. O'Neal, dangerous from three point line. Creates her own shot. It's, this is, it's so reactive by career. They're, they're there and they're just trying to keep people in front and really not forcing the defense anywhere. And as such, Puerto Rico can get virtually any shot they like in, with great level of comfort. Melendez, what a block as Yoon goes taking the left lane. Baseline shot off, Jin in there for the rebound, secured by Melendez. O'Neal currently plays professionally in Brazil, spent a lot of time in Europe, is a Kentucky grad. Mm. Veteran of this squad as well, had been to a number of campaigns. And this Puerto Rican team is missing one of their star guards in Jasmine Guathme. She's been dealing with a nagging knee injury. I know she's, she's watching from home, though. Mm. And she's been the leading scorer for this team for uh, quite some, in, in all the qualifying games. So it's a huge loss for Puerto Rico. Garante is trying to make up for that loss. She's doing good so far. Garante is with six points. Kong. You can hear that off the iron. Under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Garante is driving left, the kick, the trailer. Quinones finishes. Right now, from what I'm seeing, career, you, you usually don't want to go to a zone defense when everything's so passive, but right now they've got to try and figure out a way to stop Puerto Rico in any part of the half court. Yoon, baseline three, short. They'll keep it here. <laughs> Left alone, nearly at midcourt. Hajin Pak says, watch me hit it! Seven seconds to play. O'Neal off the screen from Quinones. Pull up jumper just inside that three point line is good at the buzzer. Puerto Rico pushes their lead to 18 after the first 10 minutes. Puerto Rico, 28 Korea 10 after the first 10 minutes of play. Yeah, what an impressive display by Puerto Rico. They've come out, they shot the ball extraordinarily well. Have a look at the numbers. A total of 63% from the field. 
nine of 15 from twos and three of four from the three-point line. A lot of those coming at the hands of Hollingshed. And she got off to a flyer. No rotation and on the defense and just able to just do whatever they want in the half court. And some really poor defense by Korea created these opportunities for Hollingshed, whether it was in transition in the half court. She was spectacular with 13 points and five rebounds. And then just when you thought you might get some relief, you see Jennifer O'Neill in those last couple of minutes come in and go two of three. Down the other end of the, the court, it's just, they're just blazing away. They've had 19 field goal attempts, four of 19, only 21%. You cannot win a game of basketball at this level at 21%. There's a nice hit by Isu Khan. But of those 19 field goal attempts, 13 of them from the three-point line. Two of 13. And it's just, they're just trying to shoot their way out of this contest. And when you're only made two of 13, not sure what their plan B is. They need to find a way to attack the rim, look at some other options. When it goes inside out, okay, you live with it. At least you're testing the defense, trying to shift the defense. But when you're just passing it around the three-point line, waiting for someone to launch, Really easy for the defense to guard that. And you would think that Chung Sun Min would change up that strategy here in the second quarter. We'll see what shakes out. Her team down by 18, 28 10 in the start of the second quarter. Nice. Hawk drives left. Beautiful take and one. And I like that. A little bit of cutting action. Move the man, move the ball, excuse me, move the person, move the ball. And then the defense gets shifted. The defense has to shift. That creates that driving lane. Now, of course, if you're Puerto Rico, you're telling your players, hey, move your feet, got to guard the ball. But it took away some of that help if you are able to get by your player. Korea, another shot at this. Getting that rebound off from the missed free throw. Heijin Pak, the feed. Block, shot, good. Chichon Pak, two points for Korea. San Antonio, the 18-year-old, had a coming out party against China yesterday. Put up her highest numbers. O'Neal with the rock, six seconds to shoot. And that that is a turnover. Well, the first couple of possessions, they look better on the offensive end with the ball movement and the attack on the rim. And down here, we're finally seeing just a little bit of ball pressure. Not a lot, but forces O'Neal into the turnover. Park, a little pump fake, catches Melendez, skip pass over. Hagen, a miss. Hollingshed there with the cleanup board. Hollingshed, by the way, Met her average and then some in the first seven minutes of play. Well, she sure did, and she's still in that attack mode. Here we see it in transition. Draws the foul on Puck. That's Chi Shung Puck. And quickly, San Antonio goes out. Rosado comes in, Garantes in. And Melendez will jog off. Puerto Rico's 18-point lead is now down to 14. These two teams competing to stay here in Sydney and move on to the quarterfinals. Everything on the line here today. Moon drives on Hollingshed. Hollingshed can't oh. keep up. Oh, and she's gone down and she's hurt. Other yeah. side. O'Neal gets hacked, and yes, still on the floor is Yevin Yoon. This does not look good. You always worry when it's not a collision injury and there's no real contact, and it's just the way you land. You just hope it's nothing too serious, but a twisting of the knee there, but she's in all sorts of pain. Yeah. 
and Korea will take a timeout here as the medical staff tends to Yoon. Yevon Yoon in distress. Yeah, this, this looks serious, unfortunately. Yevon Yoon, their 5'11", 25-year-old guard, and Puerto Rico's going to take some time here to talk it out. Yeah, you're here. Yep. I think it's under. No, no, it's gonna be on the side. Okay. You're here, okay? Then I have. Jennifer, okay? As soon as the ball's here, make a screen. Get the ball. Jennifer, make a screen to Maya. Get the ball. Go, get the ball. Go, 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 go. go. And open up the court, okay? Hey, is it up? Is it up? Again? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna switch that, okay? Jennifer, you're here. Maya, you're here. So I want you to make first this green. You keep going, right? And as soon as that happens, go make a screen to Maya. Uh, bring open up to the corner. Go hard to make it this screen, okay? If they go on. And the fans mm. wishing well to Yebin Yoon as she exits the court. With the help of the paramedics here in Sydney, another look. Ooh. As I said, it's not when it's on the landing, she just goes up and no one around. It's just when she's landed, something's given in her knee and that's not a good sign and let's hope for the best. But they're going to miss her. She's been averaging five points a game, playing about 20 minutes a game. So she's been a big part of their rotation. Durante's with a sweet turnaround jumper. And that pause in play probably hurt Korea as well. You just felt like they're getting some momentum. They'd 4-0 run to start the second quarter. Kong, top of the key. Show sure hit. We can see how with that shooting, she dropped 37 in that game against Bosnia Herzegovina. And, and she's got six so far today against Puerto Rico. Rosado finds the lane, smallest player on the floor, able to convert. I love it. She's 36 years old. Andrew, she's a she's a professor in her professional life. She's way too smart to be out there at that. <laughs> but clearly got a great love for the game. Shin blocked by Garantes. Three seconds to shoot. Kim's got to do it. A miss. O'Neal covers. Yeah, in fact, a lot of the Puerto Rican team all have regular jobs. O'Neill, one that is playing professionally in Brazil, Garantes mm. in Hungary. Well, it really is not the norm these days with women's basketball. Those that play at this level and get to represent their country, the vast majority of full-time professionals. But you're right, this Puerto Rican team, and what a love Puerto Rico as a country has for the sport of basketball. It's a really fun place. She's never been there, but seen a lot of games there and love the passion. And they love this team. And the island was recently hit by a hurricane, so they had been without power. And coming into this competition for the Puerto Rico squad, it was a big point of emphasis to do anything they can do as far as wins and represent their country to be able to bring smiles back to their homeland. And so they did that, making history with their first ever FIBA World Cup victory on day number one. And they're looking to do that again here today to move on to the quarters. Well, that's it. And that's that's the major prize. That's what it, that's what have been the goal. And you can go back over their wins and losses. And there's been some tough ones along the way. But 
ultimately, if you get to your destination of making the quarterfinals, and that's one of the also one of the advantages of being in the pool with the United States. Yeah, you take your, your, a heavy hit, which they certainly did, but it means you don't have to cross over against them in arguably the most important game. That quarterfinal game to get into a opportunity to play off for a medal, they don't have to deal with the United States. Garantes hits both. She's got eight points. You're right. So Puerto Rico played Belgium extremely tightly on day number three, only lost by three. USA had them by 64. And then against China, the Chinese had a 35-point advantage, but nothing too crazy. Coach Batista has kind of monitored and, and played with the rotations he's liked. Garantes in the eye of Kong. She gets it. Kong with another three-pointer. Again, it's not a whole lot of sophistication about what they're doing in the half court. Just spread it out, five out, and just the brilliance there by Kong who's able to knock down another three. A whistle here away from the ball. And Korea now with four team fouls here in this quarter. One more and will be in the bonus for Puerto Rico, which means they will shoot two free throws. Garantes on Pac. Misses. Melendez gets the tip, lays it in on the left. Thank you, Korea. Yeah. Pac alone. This time it's Heijin Pak for three. A pair of three pointers for Korea. They close in this gap by 16. Garantes with the strong take, a miss. Shin pushes forward. Pak in the lane, tips her rebound, and then a miscue for Korea. Melendez. Running. O'Neal spotted up on the three-point line. Won't go. Garantes goes up against two. And we'll set a thing back out with O'Neal. Third time might be the charm here. Shot gets thrown up. Go. The shot clock was expired. Well, I didn't have to stop. Korea stopped playing once he got the ball. You are allowed to play through the buzzer. Strange, strange happenings here, Andrew. I mean, it is, this is five games in six days. Mm. Maybe some mental lapses. We just saw Yoon go down for Korea. Pak straight at Kenyonas. The win out for Chi Chon Pak. And that one's going to force Puerto Rico to take a timeout. 39-25. Well, a good little run in this quarter. Korea leading at 15 to 11. And Jerry Batista wants to talk about it. No, no, five is always going to attack her. Always. Sit up. Hey, sit up. Four set. Four set. Four set. Pass the ball. Nice. In this side. Okay. Pass the ball to her. Make the screen to Maya. Maya can get the ball. Hey, if you don't have the attack, pass the ball to Areya. He can roll and then we move. Okay. Hey, listen. It's about defense. Stay closer. They are shooting like here. So if you watch it, you run. You have to be closer to your player. They're shooting like there. Okay, so be closer to your player. Mm. Well, 
What an effort play for Korea. The fans are really loving yeah. that in the stands. And you heard Jerry Batista talking about Park and saying that she's going to drive it every single time and just got to know where you want to force the defense. And that time there, they're allowing that middle penetration. Now, that might be the strategy. A lot of the times these days, most coaches are trying to send players to the baseline, cut off some of those passing angles if you do get in there. But whatever it is, got to try and keep her in front because she's looked good on the dribble. Hauling Jed to Quinones, high low. Beautiful execution. Coming out of a timeout, set play, identify your target, and you get there, and there's going to be a moving screen. In Yong, In Yong Yan just moving on the screen, and a lot of the times it's actually the ball carrier that's at fault. They're going way too early. Well, there's some poor defensive transition by Korea. Yeah, Tyra Melendez found herself all alone on an island. Gets a shot back. Baseline hits it. Tyra Melendez. She loves it. She understands the importance of it. Showing a bit of emotion, which we love to see. Kong gives it up. Korea still working the ball around. Five seconds to shoot. Pak drives right. Baseline shot up for Shin. It's huh. in at the buzzer. Chi Chong Shin. Well, he could not hit one in the first quarter. They've now hit five. They had one in the first, they've hit five in the second. Still a 16 point differential. Foul here called against Korea, so we are in the bonus. Regardless, she was shooting. It is, and it's a big margin to cap, catch up, but Korea's looked a whole lot better in this second quarter than they did in the first. Offensively starting to get a little bit more efficient, knock down shots, and probably more significantly, not showing out drastically, but their effort on the defensive end. They gave up 28 points in the first quarter. And Puerto Rico already have 16, but there's a, a different mindset, different level of intensity that we've seen from Korea so far in this second. Quinones with nine points for Puerto Rico. Handful of different players scoring for Puerto Rico. Shin, three ball, off. Outlet up to Melendez. Holland Shin trying to get open. Garantes going to work back step. Creates it short. Jin now to inbound. Under two minutes to play here in this first half. Puerto Rico up 46-28 over Korea. This is the final day of Group A play. The winner of this contest sticks around a couple days longer. They will move on to the qualifiers as Melendez is playing like she wants it. Isu Khan just complaining about the foul and there was a lot of ball. Oh no, that was a heavy foul coming from the weak side there. And she goes to the line and got the two. Little doubt. It was just from behind, and Gidantes was the one that picks up the foul, hacking on the shoulder. We're so lucky, Andrew, that we get those second and third look angles. Yeah, it did, because it did look like, if you're just looking at the ball, it looked pretty clean. It was from behind where the contact came. Good call by the officials. Hollingshed driving left, taps her own rebound. 
Korea ball. Some clarification Hollingshin is looking for here. I think she thought she got a bit of a bump on the drive. And we've seen a lot of contact. We've been talking about all tournament, a lot of contact throughout this tournament and really physical play. Looks like there might be, is it a little bit of blood that's on the hands of Girantes? The staff here will take care of that for her. And O'Neill will step out. Don beat Kim. To Kong. Three pointer. No, it's off. She already has three today. O'Neill with the dribble. He's got the handles to Melendez. Holling should be guarded tightly. There's the foul call on In Young Yin. We've been able to slow Holling Shed down ever so slightly after that unbelievable first half. Where I think she had 13 in the Oh, for Hollingshed? Yeah, uh, she had in seven minutes. I want to say you were right. I think she had her 13 and five boards in those first seven minutes. She's up to 16. Got the seven boards. Now, uh, Maya Hollingshed, too, is uh, the only naturalized player here for the Puerto Rican squad. She was drafted by the Las Vegas Aces and then later dropped off the roster. Shin got the baseline look, a miss. So a lot of talent. Good pass. Can Jonas get stuffed up there? It was late help, but it came and they're actually going to come away with it, career. Wide open, and that's that size that Hollingshed has, is able to pass over the top and off the shoulder. Shot clock off. Final 17 of the half. Shin being guarded tightly by San Antonio. She's so pesky, wins out. It's a turnover. Yeah, I love it. I love it when you see the guards up and in. That can be infectious too when you're in that second line and you see all the work the guards are doing. It's all for nothing if you can make that easy pass, but inspires the others to get up and in the lanes and you see it. Well done to San Antonio. So eight seconds to play with here. Garantes with the rock for Puerto Rico. Hits hauling shed, spin, kicks it. O'Neill in the corner. Yes! The buzzer play is in for Puerto Rico. They extend the lead. They're now up by 21 after the first two quarters of play. Well, Neil's giving them a real spark coming off the bench, but she's up to 10 points now, four of seven from the field. and. Provides a good confidence booster coming into the halftime break. That's right. Puerto Rico going into the tunnel with a 21-point lead, 51-30. Well, there we see the stats, and it was a much better second quarter for Korea because they were able to get their 20 points. Only had 10 in the first, but the big issue for them is what are they doing about their defense? 28 they gave up in the first they gave up 23 in the second. And if we go back to yesterday where they gave up 145 to the United States, that's the defensive ends that's causing them all sorts of problems. Holling Shed's been spectacular. And a lot of that work that she did with those 17 points came in the first quarter. And then, of course, down the other end, Isu Khan has been 
getting the scoreboard or keeping the scoreboard ticking over ever so slightly for her 11 points. But Yantes, as we mentioned, second leading scorer in the competition with 18. And she's been reasonably well contained, but uh, the willingness to shoot the three ball for Korea, six of 23. They're not shy. They've only had 36 field goal attempts. 23 of them are coming from the land of plenty. They just need to try and convert a little more. And that's what I'm talking about, O'Neill. She's a veteran, been around a long time. Plays in Brazil, former Kentucky player, and she's been able to get it done with her 10 points as well. And when Korea have been able to penetrate, it has caused a few problems for Puerto Rico. Haven't been able to do it regularly enough, but it's an area of strength that they could look at, isolate a few players trying to get in for this, to uh, get down here on the rim or the kick out, force the defense to collapse, whatever it may be. But this has been their staple, and it hasn't been all that successful for them with only 26% from the three. Puerto Rico able to execute everyone getting involved and looking in good position here, Andrew, to finish mm. out and secure a bid to the quarterfinals. What does Korea need to do this second half to not let that happen. Well, it's pretty simple to me. They got to find a way to crank up their defense. And offensively, it doesn't look like they're going to change what they're doing. Whether they're making it or missing them, they're just going to let it fly from the three-point line and pretty much play on the three-point line. But you see these shots that Puerto Rico are taking, and that time we saw Melendez knock one down. If not, they go to their, their pick and roll and the kick out wide open. And as you saw from the highlights, some real open shots. Defense, defense, defense. That has to be the catch cry in the career locker room at halftime. Meanwhile, the momentum is all on Puerto Rico's side. It's halftime. The Barricas lead 51 to 30. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation? Representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands. It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. My oh, what'd she do? Wow, Austin. Don't sleep on her. How about those hops by Gabby wow, Williams so up with the, the steal. As she goes all the way. Highlight play, put that on the top 10 because that is a steal out of the air and they're right on the rim. We love it from Gabby Williams. Nice little skip and finish. Yeah, great job there by Dembele getting the start for Molly here in this second. Tolo. Backdoor cut. Steph. Steph. Talbot. One of the biggest baskets of this tournament by that woman right there. And what about the pass as well? And China takes it away. Li Mang, no look oh. pass to Jin. That looks like they're having some fun. That is why Li Mang is one of the best players on this Chinese lineup. They are definitely back in this game. Let's see if they can dig down and get a stop. Anderson, tough make. And she sees her layup roll in while drawing the foul and is going to get to go to the free throw line. Good move and takes the hit here. Rebound Han Shu. Yuan, the pass up. Wow, what a move. Wu Tong Tong Wu -tong. showing us. <laughs> she is doing it right now. She's putting on a show, but I love what she's doing defensively as well. She's staying connected to whatever player she's guarding. Really impressive. The tournament, so they get really well-established roles. 
Izzy says, not in my house. <laughs> she almost hit that ball into the first row of fans. It's like a volleyball spike. Don't beat Kim. Scanning. Four seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Pac has to take it in on a much taller Stewart. What a move! Cheech on Pac! On Stewart! Chad Stewart going all over the place. Korea finding ways to keep that scoreboard ticking over. They got their problems on the defensive end. Oh, goodness me! Amy here says, get that out of here! We're back in the Sydney Superdome, and it is halftime, and it is the time where Andrew Gaze and I show you the top scorers from the first half. Right now, Puerto Rico leads 51-30. This is a do-or-die contest in Korea. They've been getting most of their production here from Lee Soo Kong, 11 points. Yeah, she's been pretty good right throughout the tournament. Of course, we ha she had that massive game against Bosnia Herzegovina and she where she had 37 in the one game that's the most by an individual player in a single game throughout the entire tournament and she's their go-to guy and every uh, possession she when she touches it she's a threat she can knock down the three she's also pretty crafty being able to find a way to create a shot off the bounce but that's where she's most comfortable uh, from the three-point line and she's been Pretty good from there this afternoon. It's also a perfect two or two from the free throw line, three of seven from the field. And they're going to need that and more in this second half if Korea are going to try and way to eat into this 21 point lead. And for Puerto Rico, it was just lights out for Hollingshed in the first quarter in particular. Maya Hollingshed. 17 points there you see a tournament average she's been solid at around 11 and a half but 13 of those 17 coming in the first quarter and off the bounce pretty good the catch and shoot from three she's been perfect that time coming down in transition just walks into a three need to close her out a lot better than that and a lot more pressure and get in her space to make it a little uncomfortable but here's the issue when you do takes advantage of her athleticism and size she's been a star for Puerto Rico in this all important game the chance to go on and play in a quarter final is a, a special moment keep their season their uh, tournament alive yeah, if you win today, you move on to those quarterfinal rounds. If you lose, you go home. These two teams have played five games, technically four and a half, as we are at the halftime break here in the last six days. Tomorrow, everybody gets off, and then we'll start the quarterfinal round on Thursday. Semis Friday, the championship and gold medal game on Saturday. The winner of this entire tournament gets an automatic bid and invitation to the 2024 Olympics in Paris, France. And I suspect that most people, including me, would think that the USA are the unbackable favorites for that. They have been really good for a team that's had some problems. Uh, three of their players because of the commit commitments in the WA Championship Series and they actually didn't get to play in the first couple of games, so they only played with nine players. It didn't bother them at all, and they've been able to 
figure things out, get people on the same page on the fly, and it, they are looking really tough. And to me, China is probably the biggest threat so far. Now, we've still got a game to go for most of the teams, and things can change. A day off that can regroup. But one of the other favourites, Belgium, has suffered a, a significant blow. Yes, in fact, they lost their captain, Misamon, ripped up her left calf in yesterday's competition. The team announced that she would be staying with the with this group the rest of the World Cup, but unfortunately, she will not be well enough to continue to play. And that's a huge blow. She renowned for her scoring, but her versatility. In fact, she's leading the tournament in assists. So that's going to be a big, big loss for Belgium, who came fourth at the last World Cup and was regarded as one of the favorites for this tournament. I haven't seen them play their best basketball, but without Nisama, the superstar, who is a prominent player, one of the best players in the WNBA in the United States. Then we see Jennifer O'Neill. She came off the bench and was really productive. The veteran, 32 years of age, and been around a long time and just shows with that, plays with that veteran savvy. And she's, she's not that tall. She's only 165 centimetres tall. And I'm a little surprised that we don't see teams attack her a little bit more on the, on the, off, on the defensive end for Puerto Rico. Post her up, put her in some tough plays. They, they don't really identify, and, and it's not just her. There's a, a few others uh, in that team that really sizes that with their guards. They are small. Res but they're you, crafty. You were talking about Rosaro and, and Rosado, and, yeah. Rosado and how how she's so productive and crafty, but she's got some stuff that. She's got some size issues. Oh, God, certainly. She's the, sh the shortest on the court, Cindy, at 165 as far as centimeters go, and then five foot five for those but, who are following in the Americas. And, and, and this is the, the, the fifth game we've seen him play. I can't recall anyone at any stage ever just putting some, uh, her on the box and trying to throw it in there. You know what I'm thinking is she's she's small enough where they the other teams might just forget about her and well, you get some of those easy sneaky passes in. Well, that's true and and usually she's guarding a guard and guards aren't always that accustomed to posting players up and working in the post so that could be then also Puerto Rico with the the size challenges they have with their guards they're well drilled at where they're going to send a double team and how they're going to trap but I haven't even seen anyone test that. I've never seen a team like Korea, and and they stick to their game plan. Well, they do. I don't know what their plan B is in offense, because that, it's about shooting threes, and if that doesn't work, we want to shoot more threes. That's how it looks throughout the tournament. And, and yeah, they too have some size issues. But what I, I, I'd love to see with Korea is is more aggression on the defense and just switch aggressively everything because they're all the same. They're basically all the same size. They don't have a lot of size dis differences amongst the group. So here's to the next 20 minutes. Everything on the line for these two teams, Korea, Puerto Rico, the winner advances to the quarterfinals in Group A. This is the final day of the preliminary rounds. And Hollingshed already with 17 on the day. Oh. Count at 19, no one stepping up for help defense. We just gotta do better at guarding the ball. Slide your feet, and then if that's not there, you'd like to think that someone on that split side on, would be on the split line on the weak from the weak side. and somewhere to offer some help. Park deflected like Hollingshed. Now there's an example of what needs to happen down the other end. Hollingshed was guarding uh, the player in the corner and she comes over just to help out. Free throw shot by Kim, misses. Garante is looking down court. Has her hand taped up now after there was some blood and an easy lay-in on the left. Just too submissive. 
I'd rather see career have six or seven girls foul out because they're attempting to go out there and compete on the defensive end than what we're seeing. Rosado with the steal, picking right out of Pac's pocket. Through traffic, Korea will pick up this possession. Early sub for Korea. Sordan Kim checks out. Jishan Park. And Korea work things around the horn. Dombi Kim, their captain. The shot's no good. We're running with Puerto Rico. Rosado. Howling shed. Cajun feeds in Pac, hits the deck, and we'll have a jump ball. It will stay. Well, there's an, an example of what I was alluding to. Pac there knew that I think she had Rosa, Rosado on her, and they try and throw it in there and take advantage of it. Yeah, Pac's got six inches on Rosado. Shot up from Chishan Pak, the first of the third quarter for Korea. And this Puerto Rico team jumped out to an 18 nothing lead to start this contest. Did not let Korea score in the first five minutes. And now we'll find themselves on the free throw line. Well, no, I think it's off the ball. Oh. Off the ball, you're right, Andrew. Meanwhile, we'll get another look here at Chichon Pak's three-pointer. And I don't mind that foul on In Young Yan underneath. And that's what I'm saying. At least she was trying to be aggressive and fight around and, and, and not let her play get in front. Garantes, foul on the floor. And I don't mind that either. At least they're trying and they're competing. Now, clearly, you can't keep going on and doing that, but at least there's that intensity, that effort to try and move your feet that time by Dung B. Kim. And just a bit more competitiveness. Hauling Shed. Wow. She's just been stroking it at yeah. a remarkable rate here today. 21 for the 22-year-old. Kim, nice little six-footer. And again, it's that attack on Rosado uh, by Pak. And a takeaway, Chishan Pak looking for some help. And a traveling call against Isu Kong. Well, I think it's there. But as I've said throughout the tournament, uh, uh, we've seen so much of that type of travel go unwhistled. And Andrew, I think you talked about this a little bit earlier in the tournament. The players are feeling out the officials and you only know from game to game. So Correct. Those adjustments, I mean, talk to me about how you even plan as a player. Well, you can't and there. You see a three ball attempt, but good effort by uh, Hollingshed again, who's just dominating this one. Great effort on the glass, but all these officials come from different parts of the world and each league has, a, you can have subtle points of difference in, their emphasis on what they are and not going to call, and it's adjusting on the fly. The defense now feeding the offense for Puerto Rico. Quinones had a hand in that steal. She gets the feed here. Shoulder down, hook with the left, a beautiful flex it up, Quinones! <laughs> She earned that on this hustle play on defense. My word, she didn't. She's 
Quinones loving her own work. Power move down low. Good touch. So I don't think the principles have changed too much for Korea about how, if at all possible, they could reverse their fortunes on this one. But the clear point of emphasis needs to be on getting some defensive stops. And they haven't been all that successful at it in the first two and a half quarters. 26 point differential is something that Korea is going to look to chip away at. Howling Shad Quinones Ooh. has her girl pinned. Got to be a foul, doesn't it? Looked like it was Chi Shang Shin who knew it was beaten, just held on. Garantes. Turns, jumps right in Kang's face. She'll get a chance to put him down from the free throw line. Her team up by 26 points midway through the third quarter. Gidantes, we see her capabilities there. Always looks like she's under control. Uses her body really well and never looks rushed the way she goes about it. It's been a a relatively quiet night for her. She's got the 10 points, chance to make it. There's 11 and possibly 12. But uh, averaging 18 points a game, second in the competition in scoring. And four of 10 so far. Yeah, in fact, she put together the best World Cup performance for any Puerto Rican player against Bosnia Herzegovina in their opening match. Eight assists, and she was one of the In fact, met them here in Sydney. She came in from Hungary and instantly gelled with this roster and this group while Pac tries to chip away at the lead, the deficit. San Antonio hits the deck and a traveling call against Izadis Quinones. Quinones, by the way, is a Dartmouth grad. That is a private university in the United States, an Ivy League private university, and she's an engineer smart. by trade. Smart, smart lady. Zombie Kim, Hong should try to track it. Quinones with the board. She's got five rebounds today. Hey, jump back. We'll wait for the rest of her team to arrive. And a foul away from the ball, San Antonio. And when you look ahead and you see Puerto Rico, they'll go get into that, sneak into the quarterfinals with this win and you can come down to that draw who you're going to play it used to be that it just was 1v4 2v3 and then due to some interesting performances let's say by teams that perhaps may have been 
less than competitive in certain situations in order to try and pick their opponent. That's why the pulls and the draw came into play, has come into play, I suspect. I mean, I'm a fan of that too. And guys, this is how it will work tonight around 11.30 to determine the pairings of the quarterfinals. The top two teams from each group will be drawn against the third and fourth teams from the opposite group. So the top two from each group will not see one another. No. Now then the each other in those semifinals. Mm. Obviously will not see each other in those semifinals. That's the reward, right, for finishing on top of your, your grouping. And so we'll continue on with a uh, yeah. single elimination competition on Thursday with those quarterfinals. Bong balls. And let's just say who are one and two. All out of that one, France, and then let's go play Canada. So it's a perhaps if you've earned the effort and you just miss out on that top two, which is going to be the case in the other pool, you. you prefer to play the second place team, particularly when the first place team is going to be USA. That's right, Andrew, because here in already determined, right? USA number one, China A. These two teams fighting for that fourth and final spot as additionally USA, China, Belgium have already qualified. Well, that's right. Now, with Missaman from Belgium going out, I'm, I'm still not convinced that... I, I expect China go into that game later on today against Belgium as the favourites, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Belgium could beat China, and that would... that potentially could change the one-two finish. Belgium would sneak in there. What we've learned here through six days of competition and anything can happen expect the unexpected drive spread out no to go over and Make him make an extra pass and said San Antonio. San Antonio, five foot centimeters, just 15 years. A coming out party for San Antonio. Lee creates her own. That one's way short. Tempo really puts him. Pull up. Three balls a miss. Melendez is the putback. The garbage woman. Well, they're just getting one in that capacity and. I just don't see the of boxing out to give themselves the best chance. Oh, double foul. San Antonio. Have a look down low after this shot there. You see the first little reaction. And there you, you see Isu Khan and Trinity San Antonio. And they'll both get a personal foul, but then it's take a So both will get tacked foul. Well, 
Puerto Rico's. Yeah, that's right. And then, and then, how is it exactly determined who will get the ball in the end? Just goes to two fouls. shot as well. She never looks really under any great stress when she lets it fly. I mean, she's played so I feel like she had a lot of experience internationally. She's hit one of those earlier today. Jones goes in for the rebound. So is the undersized team, Andrew. Yeah. And they've always had to play scrappy and a different story here today. players over six foot on the roster. Transition found wanting And while this has been this off some consistency with scoring. No, that's right. And their three-point field goal percentage has picked up early on. They were one of 10, and now 10 of 32. So has gotten better. And we'll give it another look this time from Hygiene Park. Right here as the final seconds. It's in the books. Puerto Rico still out in front. Korea 47. Ensuring they are staying in this competition and moving forward in the quarters. It is, and uh, really solid performance by Puerto Rico. Disappointing performance by Korea. That we know that they've had some challenges right throughout the career and. Uh, right throughout the tournament and coming off that record setting performance against the by the USA against Korea yesterday that would have wouldn't have done the confidence a whole lot of good gave up 145 points to the United States and you can see why based on their performance here they coming down and relying on the three ball which they're very good at they do shoot the ball quite well 33 percent on the tournament but it's down the other end of the floor. Down low. And Puerto Rico themselves have been pretty solid. In fact, better than solid from the three-point line. Six of 14 at 43% and they're 55 overall. Really good performance led by... Nine of 14 from the field. Neil's got the 12.
Arella G. Thirteen. So they've been able to share it around Puerto Rico, and they'll get a spell tomorrow. Have a break. They'll figure out later on tonight who they're going to play in the quarterfinal. Gear up for a chance to. Have so tell me this, as a competitor, what happens in that off day, and how do you switch gears now going into a single elimination tournament? Well, you're going to be able to focus in on just one specific team. You don't have a lot of time. They've played five games in six days, so rest is just important. So they won't spend a lot of time on the court, but they will spend a lot of time watching film and going through scouting reports and, and, and massage and really just trying to get your body yourself for the next couple of days. A fair bit of work, but not as much, not as taxing and as physical. And here, I mean, you're in the world's biggest stage, the FIBA Women's World Cup. 12 teams going to be narrowed down to eight this evening. Garantes and her efforts throughout the tournament certainly has propelled Puerto Rico into good positioning here. Yeah, and... Gerantes is not super quick, but just good body control. There you see the footwork and requires some help. And is an elite. Particularly off the dribble, that range where she... And then is able to pull up and use that body control for that mid-range or around the, the rim shots. She's been very, very solid. 14 points for Guillermoes as Korea looks to push the ball here in a bit of a transition. And Guillermoes made her national team debut in the quarterfinals in Washington D.C. She played for Rutgers and Texas Tech in the state. While well, we saw. She plays professionally in Hungary. Hauling Shed, creating her own. Huh. And man, she has been hot since the clock and jump ball happened. Hauling Shed with 26 points. She's got 10 rebounds. She's got a double double. Yeah, when you're in these zones, she's like looking as if. for me today. Well, I wonder too if that has a little bit with the comfortability. I know we talked about five games in six days, but you're getting used to your surroundings, your courts, the rims, the routines. Do you think that plays into it at all? Uh, absolutely, it does. And you, you... Nice little back cut. Park. with the rims and the crowd and, and yeah you don't think about that right only for a small picket of time are these teams spending together under in the schedules of your other Basket, a good little run here by Korea. They've outscored Puerto Rico 7-4 in this quarter. Getting out in transition, and it comes from their defense. A turnover leads to transition baskets. Like 
to get the ball, Maya. Pass the ball. Jennifer, you went to get the ball. But Pamela, la pasaste, te fuiste para allá al contrario. Watch this screen here. Puerto Rico, seven minutes left before they would potentially be stamping their official ticket to the quarterfinals. And just a little reminder there by Jerry Batista, the head coach of Puerto Rico, that trying to encourage his team that this is not over. And that's sometimes hard to sell when you're 22 points up and seven minutes remaining. But a little run by career just doesn't want any prospect of a miracle happening by career and when they've got such a propensity to let it fly from the three-point line they need to get super hot but when you've got hauling shed firing from the perimeter and that's up to 29 points five of six from the three-point line for hauling shed today Hawk driving right, oh. laying on the left. She might be knocking down threes, but... They're Coach skilled, Batista. though, Andrew. Yeah, they, they are. They can drive. They are. Coach Patricia be a little upset with the footwork there on the defensive end. Straight blow by. But you're right, their pace. They do have that ability to penetrate. We just don't see it all that much. O'Neal. Hawk pulls it down. Moving at a high rate. Jin shot drops. Rosado <laughs> looking. Garante's got five seconds to work with. She'll drive left, it clears, lay in money. Garantes. She just lulled them to sleep on the defensive end, got down to the last couple of seconds on the shot clock, and her lane opened up and she took advantage of it. O'Neill will pick up the team's first foul here in the fourth quarter for Puerto Rico. A little rip to the baseline. Here we see the last few minutes it's been pretty good for career and they do have these spells where they can go on they can reel off some points on the offensive end quickly with the way they play it's a pretty quick tempo style of play Kong fade away three that is her fifth of the game 17 points 50 percent from the three-point land And the Puerto Rican fans, you can start to hear them chant here inside the Sydney Superdome. Oh. What a dagger that is from O'Neal. And I, with someone like O'Neal, she's so efficient from the printer, make her a driver. So just lock in on that three-point line, and if it goes by, rely on some help or use your size to keep her in front. Holling shed and on Jin down low, but here, see, see now that separation, stay right up and almost encourage her off the three-point line and slide your feet and just try and use your length. It's almost like they're trying to overplay the drive too much and gives her that chance to get that separation and shoot the three. Nice finish to Rosado. Off the steal from Melendez. And it's been quite a career for Dombi Kim, number 23 for Korea. I believe this is going to be her final tournament run with the Korean national team. The captain in the heartbeat for Korea, Dombi Kim. Garantes 
very much the future for Puerto Rico. Despite this margin, Jerry Batista's only used the nine play, excuse me, eight players in this contest. Kong, number six. Can't finish. This one will stay. And that's what happens when you've got a day off. And with this game being so important, really shortened his rotations, unless there's some injuries that we're not aware of. But like I said, only using the eight players. Garantes being guarded tightly there by Jin. Leaves Quinones open on the block. Hawk behind the screen, and they're letting it rain here for Korea in the fourth quarter. Fans loving the way they're shooting. Which is kind of scary, Andrew. Yeah. You can see that there's some real potential on this Korean side because they do have that ability to shoot the ball, but it's been this end of the floor, not just in this one, the entire tournament where they need to rethink their strategy and their intensity. Chin to Jin. Good look here. Penetration under two minutes to play. This is Group A, the finale for these two teams, and it was win or go home. This is Bean and Barton here alongside Andrew Gaze, the FIBA Hall of Famer. Garantes gets blocked by Kim. It's a nice way to go out for the senior captain. Jin's land is missed. And Puerto Rico going to take their time here. Wonderful result for Puerto Rico. As you mentioned, the nation's going through some challenges with the natural disaster they've had to deal with. And hopefully they're watching at home, getting a lift out of the performance of their, their female basketball players. I know there are. Luckily for me, I got to work with Natalia Melendez, who was a former national team player for Puerto Rico during the qualifying rounds and certainly through the America. And so I've been following her on social media and I know that the whole Island is fired up over the way these women have been performing here in Australia. Well, they're going to get to play off in a quarterfinal. And there was some uncertainty about that before the tournament started, but they've earned their way through it there, and Girantes has been a big part of it. Quinones with the rebound and blocked by Kim. Kim's got two late blocks. So now we're just waiting for those final ticks to come off this clock here inside the Sydney Superdome. Puerto Rico ahead by 19. And let's not forget they're doing it without one of their stars in Jasmine Guethemi, who throughout the qualifying was their leading scorer and rebounder with almost 19 and six. A truly special player. She's back home. Uh, she's got a nagging knee injury that she's trying to take care of. And so I know she's here in spirit with her national team. Garantes with the final drive, they give to Quinones, and the bucket goes down. Shot thrown off by Korea, but you gotta shake it up. 
Puerto Rico advances to their best quarter of the game. But it wasn't enough in a pretty comprehensive victory for Puerto Rico. As we mentioned, they really tightened their rotations up. Only went with the eight players and they got it going courtesy of Maya Hollingshed. 29 points to go along with 12 rebounds. So one of the better individual performances we've seen all tournament as the Koreans pay respect to the fans that come out to support them. And again, it was Isu Khan for Korea with the 22 points that led the way. And it's a disappointing end for Korea, but uh, it was a mighty effort for them to make their way through to qualify for this tournament. We look at the shooting percentages and it's all going the way of Puerto Rico. 55% in total from, excuse me, 53% in total from the field as opposed to 41 for Korea. And the three-point shooting was very good by Puerto Rico. Nine of 19 after a really slow start, Korea picked up in that area. And there you see those leading scorers that we just mentioned. Girantes who was she right on her average, but wasn't necessarily one of her better performances, but still did enough. And it was the turnovers that really caused some problems as well for Korea. And they just got annihilated as well on the boards. So it was a, a difficult game for Korea, but a nice result for Puerto Rico we get to go off and prepare to play in a quarterfinal of the World Cup. It'll be their first quarterfinal appearance here in the World Cup play and they are doing it with a band of women that have found a way to pull off enough victories here in the toughest competition in the world. We've seen Tyra Melendez miss some time due to an injury. Jennifer O'Neill and here the coming out party for Maya Hollingshed just putting on her best performance yet. Yeah, she's came out and just was on fire. Had those 13 points in the first quarter and didn't let up. Just they were the teammates were constantly finding her and she can hit the three, get to the rim off the bounce. She's a handful to guard and we saw the absolute very best of her. And it's not, as we mentioned, it wasn't just the 29 points. It's the work on the glass as well with the 12 rebounds. Completely dominated. And Jennifer O'Neill, the KG veteran, came in and played a little cameo coming off the bench for her 15 points. And as we said, Girantes with 18 right smack bang on her average for the tournament. Yeah, and you got to give some love, too, to Tyra Melendez and Isalis Quinones. They took care of rebounding today and made sure that their presence complemented that of Hollingshed. And look at that, the passion of yeah. this Puerto Rican squad. They are moving on. <laughs> oh, you got to love it. You got to love it. A look now at game day number six, Group A. Of course, Puerto Rico just finished Korea. We'll see China and Belgium coming up and USA and Bosnia. Hertz Egovina coming up next here inside the Sydney Superdome. USA, China, Belgium, Puerto Rico, the four teams moving on. My word. And, uh, and unless, if Belgium can cause an upset, they still have the chance to get in that top two spots. So still a lot to play for in that game between Belgium and China. You said it, Andrew. It is Puerto Rico that cuts a three-game losing streak here and seals their bid to the quarterfinals. For Andrew Gaze and the entire FIBA broadcast, Chris, we say goodbye for now. Final score, it's Puerto Rico out in front.